Hey guys, welcome to another TARDIS building video. This video, I'm going to be going over some parts that I've been waiting to arrive. As I mentioned in the previous video, I have a little group now where we've been looking for parts and as they are also building this console, and we've kind of banded together to try and find pieces and parts, and a lot of those obviously are in the UK, so I'm really excited to show you those parts that have shown up and how they look and how accurate they are and some of the discoveries we've made, including some identification. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. If you're building your own TARDISes, this is going to be a great way of seeing everything that is uh, discovered and where you can see the parts. So without further ado, we're going to work our way around and I can't wait to share those with you. Let's go. All right, starting off with the fabrication panel, there's not too much that's been new on this particular panel, except for the fact that these guys have now been set in there. This was a newer one that I found in the UK that actually had the base plate, uh, which I had previously not had, and it's fantastic to actually have it because it looks pretty close to the real one. Yes, I love the aging. Um, I can't wait to actually be able to spin it a little bit more uh, securely. And then, of course, this base here, which was done by Chris over in the UK, who tried to match it as much as he could. And I really like it. I did do some weathering work on it to try and make it match. I just, I, I really love it. I might it be a little heavier to match than the other one because I don't think I'm gonna touch this one. I love how old and used it looks. But yeah, I'm really excited. This panel is coming along. There's a few little things left to do, mainly painting and setting these up, but I haven't done that yet. But overall, that's where this one is. No real identification any more than these except for brass safe handles, which you can still find on eBay and whatnot if you, just, if you keep an eye out for them. Uh, and then this one still needs to be modified, which I'm also in the process of figuring out. Here we are at the communications panel. This panel is really exciting because there's been a number of pieces that have been newly identified and uh, confirmed, and it's really, I'm just really excited about it. Starting off, we're gonna talk about these handles here. These handles, initially people thought were door handles or some sort of car door handle or something, and I always thought they were some sort of rotary handle, although I never found anything like this. Uh, Chris in the UK, though, fully identified them. They are the exact handles used on the TARDIS console, and they are still in production. You can still get them. Uh, they are rotary handles. I don't know how I'm gonna connect them yet, but if you're interested in them, they are by Craig and Derricott. The links uh, for where some of these are, or at least the write-ups, are gonna be in the description below. But they are just a classic hand-operated uh, rotary switch. So, you know, or however they're going to do. I think I don't know when the show, I, I you don't see them used too much, whether they're just kind of like turned. We'll figure that out at some point what they're going to do, but they are exact and I'm so thrilled and excited to have them on there uh, and figure that out. Next up, we're going to talk about this guy here, which was fully identified. And that is, the Mer it's a Mercedes-Benz MB headlight switch. So, Again, identified by Chris, both top and bottom, and I was able to find a really used one, which you'll be seeing in the close-ups here. And it's really great and amazing how old this looks. I didn't be creative about mounting it. Uh, I did recently 3D model one to be that piece because I could never figure it out, but there it is. And it's completely accurate, and I can't be happier with that. It's just so cool to have it. Last thing on this panel to talk about are these. I created a 3D model for these pieces years ago in an effort to be as close as possible. And they were great and I was happy with them. However, in discovering what they were, again, Chris in the UK, we were able to ide cor correctly identify them. A lot of people thought that they were pasta wheel cutters and I always thought they were a little too big for that. Most of them were like two and a half inches max. These are three inches. And I've always thought, well, what was it? What could it be? And it ends up being a spacer from a jet engine. Uh, <laughs> crazy and accurate, not overly expensive. The part number is gonna be in the description, but they're uh, 317028 spacers. And what's crazy, crazy is my model that I made locks in as if it was made to fit with these. It's pretty cool. I'm actually pretty proud of that fact. But these are really awesome. Now, mine here you can see are very, very grungy. I wanted a little bit more grunge to them. I may sand them back a little bit, but we'll see. Uh, mainly because this is brand new, nice and silver shiny. Although I may end up doing that too, who knows? Uh, but I wanted the more patinaed ones. Uh, so I ended up getting some used ones, swapping out for these new ones. And yeah, but like these are on two of the panels and Super hard to figure out after all these years. Never would have thought jet engine spacers for oil filtration 
All right, here we are at the diagnostic panel. Uh, a number of parts I did get. This is the black uh, Ormond dial that I've had for a number of years now. And this is a new one I got. They are quite different. For instance, this middle part, these knobs are a different size and the bottoms are completely different. This one doesn't like to spin as easily either. So I may, uh, I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna do some modifications to this uh, to actually make it look like this, or I may end up copying this to uh, use some of the parts on this, but I haven't decided yet. But it is nice to have two black ones. If you remember previous videos where I talked about having a silver one, uh, it's kind of crazy how finding this other black one is a random find on eBay. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, next up is gonna be this piece. Now, originally I've mentioned a few times how I was just gonna use the red bulb that is just like the ones in the helm. And it's really great. However, again, Chris and I both together figured out what the scope was that goes right here, which it's kind of like loose right now because I have to find a way to attach it a little bit more physically. But as you can see, hopefully, that's it. That is the exact part. And what's crazy about that is it's actually a three different pieces put together starting with this bottom plate which is the same as it was from right from the beginning it's always been the mount for the lenses that either got broke or lost or whatever and then one of these which a very simple regular push button but when you flip it upside down not installed with the little knobs and then you take the top of one of these push buttons which is the same as on a couple other panels you get this with the light still able to shine through and be red. And took the green button out, obviously, so it can still shine and affixed there. I'm so excited about that. I wasn't gonna do it, but the fact that we found the accurate pieces, I couldn't not do it. It's pretty cool and exciting. I'm gonna put that up there for now, just explain. And then we're gonna move to the top. Now this piece was frustrating. <laughs> this is, the exact piece. There's still something missing from the middle. I haven't really figured it out yet. Um, but this guy here is a NEMA 27 motor. And so like the, the NEMA 27 motors are like used in like stepping motors, like three printers and other kind of like laser cutters, all that kind of stuff. And usually it's in a big box here, which I'll be showing. And this is just the end cap. So I was able to find a vendor online who was able to get me just the end cap and fit it in. And I'm really stoked with it. Now, unfortunately, I've completely misplaced where my other one is. It's probably just somewhere, but I was really close, only off by a couple millimeters. It did unfortunately mean that my holes are still kind of visible. You can kind of see it here, but when it's all together, you're not really gonna see it. If I decide to, in the end, to change this plate, you will never notice. But yeah, I'm really excited. Actual part again, found it, NEMA 27, pretty cool. Right now, if you're noticing, I have a couple different switches on these sides. I'm trying to figure out which ones are like better to modify. Neither of them are accurate. Haven't been able to find those, but I haven't decided which ones are like better. That's a more of a me thing though. All right, some exciting stuff to talk about in the helm panel, just very briefly, there's just two pieces. One thing is this one right here, which I kind of have to revitalize underneath it. I did have a little bit of a, of a mishap with the drilling of it. Uh, but I will be fixing that in a couple months. But basically, this is a Hella Universal 12 volt fog lamp switch. So you pop it up and then it lights up. And again, another car part like on the other side. So it's kind of cool. Uh, the green lights up. It does have interchangeable lenses. You can get them in a couple different colors. Also, a current modern day part that you can get. And what's really neat is this one and, and the Mercedes one and everything. You can still purchase. It's pretty cool. Now, extra cool, I finally assembled my train levers as a test. I have a lot of work still to do to these, but I really wanted to show them off. Again, thanks to Chris for machining these caps for me. Uh, I also got these from Nigel, who was the one who gave me the file for this. I also had some custom machine pieces, as well as laser cut pieces from Sand Cut Send, and 3D printed pieces that my wife printed for me. So this is an amalgamation of multiple different pieces, but the first test has been working pretty awesome. Nothing is affixed down totally. It has a little bit of work to do, but take a look at how cool it is. To have those. It's so cool. I can't wait to have them all painted, all colored, and all interacting with the lights. As you can see, it's nothing quite in there, but awesome. 
Now we're up to the mechanical panel and there's just a couple little things that are different on this and new that I want to quickly go over. Some of it you may not realize is new and the first thing is this spool. This is a metal spool that is the exact part. Uh, Chris found it in, at Bob's Bits even though I asked him numerous times about finding this part and they actually have one and he let me have it which is really generous and I'm really appreciative of that. So we, and then we also figured out what they were and they're actually from Make It Avionics and it's from an NBC test kit. So this one, the one in the communication, which I meant to mention before, it has this bottom piece and then different top pieces. And then they're used all elsewhere on the whole entire TARDIS console and room, actually. And so this red piece, the two red pieces over there, they're all related to this test kit. Um, very hard to get. Never got a reply back from me either about looking into getting more pieces. So that's unfortunate, but actual metal piece. I can't wait to bolt it in. The other piece, which is a little frustrating, are the red knobs these red knobs we found them we found again chris found them uh and these are them these are red vinyl rubber covers for something but we're not exactly for sure for what so i opted to put them on knobs that you just kind of like wedged on and then you can still use it i'm not entirely sure what they did on the real one but that's, that's that. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And I'm really excited that I'm able to have all three. Oh, one part I forgot to mention is these guys here. I always was wondering what they were. These came from this and they actually go in here and in here to hold the wire on. So that will be installed and they are literally just like red barbs. So there you go, a little bit of parts that came in. I'm really excited about a lot of these, even the ones that we can't fully identify uh, yet. Uh, as soon as we do though, they'll be listed so you can kind of find your own. You can occasionally find these kind of things just by looking in the weirdest places. Uh, those weren't even found on eBay or any random shop. They were just found on a different auction website. So I'm really excited. I'm so thrilled to be able to share these parts with you guys. If you have any questions or comments, ask me down in the comments below. I'm happy to answer, happy to help and happy to continue to identify these from now until I'm finished. I am getting close to having every piece on this thing. Uh, and then it's just gonna be on lighting and these lit up again, the bottom lit up and then every panel and some painting of those train levers and everything. I'm really excited to share those with you guys. Anyway, thank you guys so much for liking, for subscribing, following me along, staying with me through this journey. And I hope you guys are having a great time seeing all this. Anyway, as always, we'll see you next time and thank you for watching.